moving on the cabin of the Tesla Model S, obviously you get that minimalistic look you get on all Teslas. I really do like the front seats, they are way more beautiful than the one on the Model 3. They are fully adjustable electrically. You can even adjust the headrest. And that was some things I was missing on the S Sport seats of my Audi S5 where the headrests were fixed and you couldn't really adjust them. Here they are electrically adjustable. Being this a car from end of last year, it has the carbon fiber trim that you cannot have anymore except on the performance version of the Model S. I really didn't like the wood uh, trim. It really look old and cheap. So this one with the carbon fiber looks a lot more sportier. The Model S is quite roomy on the interior, quite comfortable, no issues whatsoever. A few little annoying detail. I would have loved to have less chrome on the outside of the car, but a little bit more chrome on the inside. For example, those commands here, they are full black plastic. They look a little bit cheap, as opposed to this plate here saying Model S. So I would have loved to have here at least some chrome bits to give a more refined look on the cabin. And also, I do like the door panels. They look very modern, but there's no storage here. So we're really missing some storage for bottles or other stuff. And these commands are from old Mercedes. It's the same for the commands over here. They could have updated that and have some things like the Model 3 that would look a little bit more modern. If we go now into the cabin, so a more classic layout with a screen in front of you and the big, huge 17 inch screen that I really, really love. It's quite responsive, especially with the hardware 2.5 that is in, the, in this version of the Model S. And the map is coming from Google which means that you can uh, select all kind of shops and uh, the navigation is going to bring you there. Like for example, let's say, Allez à Ikea Obon. That's Ikea. And there you go. So it found Ikea close to Geneva and navigation is ready to bring me there. I also like a lot these little details on the Tesla, like the car that is displayed on the front screen is the exact same configuration you buy with the same color, the same wheels. And if the doors are open, like it is the case now, you can see that they are open there on the image of the car. And now if I close my door, then it's gonna be closed. The same if I open now the rear trunk, you see that it shows as open. And now if I close it, it's gonna be closed on the image. I really love those little attention. Keep in mind that on my um, Audi S5, you didn't even have the image of your car. It was a standard uh, gray, if I'm not mistaken, car with standard wheels. And I really love the attention to details you find on the Tesla Model S. You can change what you wanna have displayed on each side of the screen by long pressing the wheels here and select whatever you want. The clock, music, the consumption graph, info about the vehicle or your phone. I like to have the consumption here and my music over here. 
I only charged the car once, which was last Wednesday, more than one week ago. Okay, I didn't really drive the car since last week. I just drove it around here. But you can see that uh, I still have 192 kilometers left from the battery. I charge only 80% unless I go for a road trip where you can select to go to full charge, but uh, Tesla recommends that you charge only 80 to 90%, which is good for the battery. When I fully charge the battery, the range is around 580 kilometers. Let's say 500, which is more realistic the way I drive the car, which is on par with what I had on my Audi S5 Sportback. With a full tank, I would have a range of around 540 kilometers. So no range anxiety whatsoever. I like this big armrest, it's very comfortable. And by sliding here, you have two cup holders. You also have some storage here where you can uh, have the cable for your phone whether it's iphone or android smartphones and actually some things that i like to point out i thought that the iphone cable was included with the car when i discovered that it wasn't i went to the tesla store in geneva the same day i pick up the car to order the cable the guy was into the car uh, taking note of the vin number and I discover that there's a, there is a little scratch over here. You cannot even see it. It's right there. And I was just saying, oh, I didn't see that scratch on the tray. And the guy said, don't worry. We're going to order a new tray for the car as well. I didn't ask anything. And I was not expecting this to be changed in a car that has already 3,000 kilometers. I want to point this out because I've heard so many stories about bad Tesla customer service. I have to say that at least here in Switzerland, I cannot complain for now. Some more space here, which is quite huge. You can adapt those bits here for bigger cups or smaller cups. Got my sunglasses here. I like how it closes, soft close. And here you have a little storage where I usually put my phone for now. But keep in mind with the big acceleration of the car, the phone can just go out of this space. By pressing this button, you access to the glove box, which is quite okay for a glove box. And music on the Tesla is quite good. When you buy a Tesla, you have a premium Spotify account, at least here in Europe. I already have my premium Spotify account, so I just connected with my credentials and I have access to everything. So I find exactly the playlist I have on my phone, for example and the quality of the speakers is quite good. When you think that you pay 1,000 somethings at Audi to have a so-called Bang & Olufsen, here it is included in the price of the car. You get speakers everywhere. There, are, there is a huge speaker that goes all around there on the front windshield. And it is done by Tesla. And the quality is really, really, really good. I cannot uh, make put music now for copyright issues, but believe me, the sound is really, really good and there's no extra cost for it. And as I said on my previous video, I like software, I like cars. So this car combines the two things. There are a lot of things I love in this car, how you set up things. I'm going to make a proper video going in detail, but just to show you, if I want to open the sunroof, I just slide here and I can select the percentage. Like, let's go 37% and the sunroof opens at 37%. And also, the Model S has air suspensions and you can set up the when you drive the car now you, have, you don't have access to this uh, menu but when you drive the car you can set up how you want to have the air suspension and let's say that you have a road bump you can go 
high you can put that high which will raise the car and it will remember the GPS location and whenever you go again into that area it's gonna raise the car automatically a software update a couple of months ago brought two new features the dash cam which is the one right here and the sentry mode the sentry mode i'm gonna make a specific video about it it's something's very cool where it records the surroundings of the car and if someone approaches it will have a message display on the screen uh, by having a, a usb flash drive here 256 gigabytes for me it's recording from the side cameras and the front camera to summarize about the interior of the Tesla Model S, I really like it a lot. Again, I will repeat this on almost every video I do about the Tesla. Germans are a little bit better in terms of perceived quality on the cabin, but Tesla did a lot of efforts. If you compare an old Model S from 2013, let's say, with this 2018 model, even the 2019, uh, the layout looks the same, but if you go into details on the material and on the assembly, on the finishing, it's really night and day. They improved a lot. Um, I'm ready to excuse things on the Tesla. Why? Unlike uh, traditional car manufacturers that have a hundred years of history behind them, uh, Tesla was born in uh, 2002, if I'm not mistaken, so it's a very young company. We need to give them time to improve. Of course, it doesn't mean that I'm going to accept everything coming from the car, but I'm ready to accept some little issues on a car that is so young, on a car manufacturer that is so young, I would not accept them from, let's say, Audi or Mercedes or BMW. I have a few modifications planned in the coming weeks. As I said, I'm going to have a full chrome delete. Everything chrome is going to go black. I'm going to have the, wheel, the wheels replaced by some uh, different, more aggressive, still black but larger wheels. And most important, I'm going to have a full detailing with ceramic coating. And this will be done by my friend Crystal Look Detailing. Go check him on Instagram or Facebook, Crystal Look. Uh, I've done already three cars at Crystal Looks and this guy is really a genius. And the advantage of doing uh, full detailing on, of your car is going to cost you a little bit upfront, but then whenever you want to clean the car, you just cleaning, clean it with a few bucks because you just have to clean it with the water and all the dirt will just slide out. So this is something I'm going to do to all my cars. I'm really convinced about it. So if you leave in Switzerland, or if you live abroad and you want to <laughs> come in Switzerland, make sure you contact Crystal Look Detailing.